technology within the school. So you actually want to reduce the chance of spinal damage, backaches in younger children. So they're actually looking to ban heavy book bags in India. One of the themes that I have spoken about in this show before is a shortage of insulin. We know that that remains a life-saving drug for persons with diabetes. And there, there was a recent report that half of the persons who need insulin, perhaps the majority of those are in Asia and Africa, will not be able to access it. One in two persons with type 2 diabetes already will not have access to insulin. And part of the problem is the rising price. So the astronomical cost, especially for brand name insulins, and the fact that these insulins must be safely handled, must be distributed, must be stored in re refrigerators with sterile needles and um, syringes that have to go along with it, may not be available. So it's 97 years since, since insulin was first identified by Frederick Banting and Charles Best in Canada. It was one of the first wonder drugs of the 20th century, and it has remained consistently expensive over these last almost 100 years. And the reason? Simply due to greed. There have been taxes, steep markups by the companies um, involved with the manufacture, and Supply chain costs have actually been pushing up the drug price for insulin and hurting affordability. So that's something, though, that we continue to call for to make not just insulin, but many of these drugs in the management of diabetes, hypertension, um, heart problems, apart from the CDAP program, it's time to expand and time to include many more of these chronic illnesses and drugs available um, for the populace. Canadian researchers had some interesting um, re reviews about the dangers of sugar-sweetened beverages with something called high fructose corn syrup, showing a very strong association with weight gain, obesity, and diabetes. There's been a barrage of criticism as there has been a recent partnership between many of the diabetes charities and some of these soft drink man manufacturers. So Diabetes UK, which is perhaps the largest diabetes charity in the United Kingdom, recently partnered with a soft drink company called Britvic, and that sells drinks like Tango and Pepsi across there um, in the United Kingdom. So Diabetes UK actually looking to gain as much as half a million pounds, 500,000 pounds from Britvic. So and they're thinking that, you know, you're a, so it's literally sleeping with the devil um, while trying to get money. So there's been a so a lot of noise actually from the medical fraternity about the fact that Diabetes UK is accepting funds. We could think about some of the funds from the tobacco companies. So actually trying to, trying to assist in so many sporting events, even health and medical events um, locally and worldwide. Staying within the theme of diabetes, in the United States, researchers have found that Doing an ultrasound of the shoulder seems to be a clue. It seems to be a marker to actually pinpoint persons who may be pre-diabetic or may be diabetic. Apparently, when they do an ultrasound for, let's say, some musculoskeletal issues on the shoulder, there's a muscle there called the deltoid muscle. And when that looks brighter, it's been associated with an increased chance for you having diabetes. So that's some fascinating research out of the US. And men with type 2 diabetes have a higher risk for heart attack, stroke, and death in the three months after having what is called a hypoglycemic episode. That's low blood sugar. Some of the symptoms might include weakness, hunger, headache, sweating, your heart may race. Um, there may be mental, mental issues like confusion and even seizures. And in the first three months after this low blood sugar episode or hypoglycemic episode, men were found to be at an increased risk for death, heart attacks, and strokes. So as usual, as part of the Healthy Lifestyles theme for Doctor in the House, especially around the Christmas time, I like to include some tips for healthy eating, if possible. 
So it's been thought that during the season with so many parties and functions that you may actually be having more than 500 calories per day extra. So amidst the festive merriment and tempting treats, these constant feasts can actually affect our weight for the entire year. So it's important to limit the portion sizes, avoid snacking and eating at the serving areas, and choose wisely at the buffet table. Make sure that you don't skip meals and you present yourself at a party actually in a ravenous mood and move into another room after eating and avoid lingering at a table. Remembering to the value of exercise during this time um, for about 30 to 60 minutes for most days in the week. Drinking alcohol um, is also, it may be associated with weight gain because it's packed with empty calories and avoid sweets, so you're limiting carbs then if you wish during that time. One of, the, one of the dishes traditionally associated with Christmas is actually the turkey and almost all of the meat from a wild turkey is dark meat with a more intense flavor. Dark meat has a higher amount of something called myoglobin that gives this meat the reddish color. Nutritionally, dark meats contain higher amounts of zinc, B vitamins, and amino acids. But commercial um, turkeys, which often we may get from places like the United States in a post-Thanksgiving era, can weigh as much as 50 pounds, and many are packaged in a salt solution that may have as much as 800 milligrams of sodium per serving. So remember that, that the wilder turkeys might be rich in your vitamins and zinc and minerals and so forth, but some of the commercially prepared butterball type turkeys um, as well as some of, the, some of the nutrients associated with it, you may actually be getting a lot of salt and even perhaps a lot of fat. Contrary to the popular be belief that it's the tryptophan in the turkey that makes us a bit sleepy or drowsy after eating it, apparently the amount of tryptophan in most of these birds is quite similar. And the drowsiness might be just due to the sheer volume of food that we eat during this feast. So it's been estimated that perhaps more than 4,000 calories might be eaten on one of those meals on Christmas Day. And that doesn't include all the trimmings, the snackings, and of course, the alcoholic drinks by certain persons. To avoid that little tiredness afterwards, um, avoiding carbohydrate-rich foods, we spoke about the sugary foods, and filling up on lean sources of protein, perhaps the peas, beans, fruits, vegetables, nuts, low-fat dairy, low salt as well, as we know that poor diets are responsible for more of the global health burden than sex, drugs, smoking, and alcohol combined. Speaking of Thanksgiving, Normal weight persons who weighed themselves every day from Thanksgiving to New Year's Day did not seem to gain weight. And those who were, who were a bit fatter actually lost weight. So perhaps daily, weight, daily weighing and monitoring your weight during the festive season might be a clue. It might be a red flag that you should be vigilant in how planning your meals and how you plan your meals. Right, so let's take a short break, and when we return, it's the open forum of Doctor in a House. Stay with us. And can be viewed on the go now with the Airlink TV app for Google devices. Simply go to the Google Play Store, search for the Airlink TV app, download the app, click on the link, and fill out the form. The account activation will be emailed or texted to the user. It's safe as no credit card is needed. The first 30 days are free, and you can subscribe and receive a box for your TV to stream the same content. Sheikli Show Limited, the Caribbean's largest manufacturers of plain and printed paper bags, leaders in plastic bags, vermicelli, split piece powder, and greaseproof paper, ideal for doubles, french fries, and sandwiches. Supplying stores nationwide. For quality products, trust Sheikli Show Limited, 665-3336.
blood pressure is as dangerous as an overpumped balloon. Measuring your blood pressure every day can save you from risk of high blood pressure. Microlife Fully Automatic Upper Arm Blood Pressure Monitor with Stroke Risk Detection. Microlife AFib screens for atrial fibrillation while taking your blood pressure. High blood pressure and atrial fibrillation are both considered controllable risk factors for stroke. If AFib is present during blood pressure measurement, the AFib icon is displayed flashing at the end of the triple measurement. Once three measurements are complete, the measurement data are shown on the display. Microlife, a partner for people, for life. Need medical assistance? Come check us out at Ultimate Medical Clinic. We offer a wide variety of medical treatments. Why live in pain and suffer with wounds and ulcers? Ultimate Medical Clinic also provides laser therapy for pain relief and wound healing. We also treat arthritis, knee, neck pain, diabetic neuropathy, diabetic foot sores, psoriasis, eczema, and many more health conditions. Call us today to schedule your appointment, 665-1188, or visit us at 111A John Street, Montreux, Shagona. Welcome back to Doctor in the House, and as usual, we're live on Monday nights with a rerun on Saturday afternoons at 1 p.m. We're also streaming, if you can get by the Airlink app, so we will be streaming live to on the World Wide Web. So before we actually go into the, the open forum and the, and the telephone calls, we usually have a video meant to stimulate the thinking. And I just thought that th there is a bit of a tear-jerking ad. It's one of the Christmas ads from a few years back in the United Kingdom that has been making a resurgence lately on the internet. And I think it captures the magic, love and power of Christmas and families. Let's have a look. Hi Chris, it's Mum. Merry Christmas, Poppet. Another year has passed. I wanted to start this one by saying something I haven't said yet, which is thank you. Thank you for taking the time to remember me. After all these years, I can't believe you're going to be 30 soon. I wish I could be there to see how you've grown, to see what kind of man you've become. I know I would be so proud of you. So this is it, my last tape. I wish I could keep talking to you every Christmas, but it's time to say goodbye. Just remember how much I love you. Never forget that, okay? I will always be your mum. Before I go, let me tell you a story about the happiest day of my life, the day you were born.
Great. I'd like to thank the members of our studio audience and welcome them to Mrs. Sat Budram and Donald Gangadeen, not forgetting beloved Dr. Neela Ramdas Tilaksing. A special hello to, to the Dukarans from Gulfview in South Trinidad, Jesse, Cindy and the rest of the family, firm viewers and fans of Doctor in the House. God's blessings to you during the Christmas season and all the best in 2019. Special hello to, to the Cannes, Carl Cannon family from Freeport in central Trinidad. They continue to be firm fans and supporters of our show. Right, so I think that the phone lines can be open now. Let's, let's see if we have uh, many of the, the viewers who wanted to share some medical questions or ideas, thoughts or comments with us. So the numbers are on the screen. We'd love to hear from you. Um, I know that as part of the medical news, I would have touched on some themes, but if you have any of the questions, we, we would certainly appreciate them. Most of our viewers, if not all, are, are very insightful and knowledgeable, and they always come with, with things to stimulate interest. While we are waiting on a first caller, um, I just wanted to also remind persons about a certain blood test. And I always speak about it on the show, and I think tonight is no exception to the hemoglobin A1C blood test for diabetic patients. Um, it can be used to diagnose diabetes, but it's also used as a marker to assess control of somebody's blood sugar for the preceding three months. So it's expressed as a percentage, and normal ranges may be under 7% or under 6.5. The scourge of diabetes is affecting more than 425 million people worldwide. It's the leading cause of blindness among working-aged persons, the number one cause for end-stage kidney failure, non-traumatic loss of limbs, and you're two to three times more likely to have a heart attack and stroke if you're a diabetic. So it's not, so it's not um, an innocuous or benign illness. It's something that needs aggressive and tight control in order to prevent complications. So the hemoglobin A1C, a blood test to monitor and ask your healthcare provider about. Well, let's go to the phone lines. Hello, good evening and welcome to Doctor in the House. Yeah, good night, good night. I try to go on the program, yeah? You're on the air. Thank you for joining us. Yes, ma'am. Yes, good night. Good, good night, Dr. Tilok Singh. Good a evening. great program, all in view of program. Thank you, it's a delight very to have you. Very educational. Thank you, thank you. It's a delight to have you on the air. Right. See, not, your topic was on diabetes, right? Yes. I have two, two questions to ask you. Certainly. Um, I find I lost in some weight recently. Okay. So I cut down on the but I have a back problem. But that, that is insignificant to my weight. I find I lost a lot of weight. Okay. Recently, mm -hmm. right? So I find it kind of unusual, and I find it frequent, a frequent urination in the night now. Right. You're and a diabetic uh, as well, but you're a diabetic? No, well, I was not okay. diabetic for diabetes, okay. but okay. I, was, I was two years ago, I, I, did, I do a test every year, mm -hmm. and two years ago they told me I was still diabetic. Right. But I do a little exercise and thing every day, due to my back and I do a ride a little bike and thing. Fantastic. And so I would like to know if I should attend the clinic and take a fresh test again before the year done. Yes. It's a plan already to do so going to the next week and take a test and the test uh, uh, it's the A1C mm -hmm. test now. It's a good idea. And the next, um, the next thing I want to ask you know, is that I have a, I have a son, like he has a sinus problem, my son. Mm -hmm. Because in the morning early, he get up and cough, and like he has a cold, and he sinuses, but bottom. Um, so what is the best thing, what do you recommend for him to, to go and see an ENT specialist, or I don't know. Okay. But there's a persistent thing going on about two years now, two or three years now, he has that in the morning, he's cough, and... Right. Right, thank you, I'll listen, I'll, I'll listen to you on television. I'm Thank you very much for taking the time to call in. Two superb questions, I think, to open the batting. And it's a reminder as well to when you're patched into the studio that you can listen on your telephone and mute the volume on the television set if you find that there is a bit of a feedback that would be created when you're patched in. 
Um, so the first one is with respect to weight loss. And of course, that can be um, sometimes a sinister symptom. And, and it's rightfully, it's worrying to both the patient and the doctor because of the many causes. Um, so, and I think I like that idea that you want to get some fresh blood investigations, some fresh blood tests done. Apart from the sugar, the doctor may also want to have a look at some of the organs, such as the kidney function, liver function, a thyroid blood test, a blood count. And um, if you're a man, I'm over the age of 50, so I know there's a bit of controversy, but I would still want to check a PSA. So that is a specific blood test for the prostate. Um, if you find that you're also having frequent urination, that may be one of the symptoms for uncontrolled diabetes, but it doesn't have to be the only cause. Sometimes it may be as a result of an enlarged prostate or issues affecting the prostate gland, if the calcium level is high. So if you have problems with some of the salts, um, if you're on certain medications, they may all be reasons for having increased urination at night. So I think First things first, that you want to start with blood tests. The back pain may or may not be relevant in this story um, in terms of weight loss, but your doctor may also want to consider doing some sort of imaging, such as an X-ray or a scan, an MRI scan of the back to see whether there is any reason for why you are losing weight and having some of the symptoms such as lower back pain. So it may not be due to diabetes. There are a few other medical issues that need to be sorted out and identified. So that's the first step to find out the reason and deal with the appropriate cause. Um, the second question with respect to sinus issues, and of course we're exposed to so many of the precipitants in the atmosphere. Persons may have blocked noses, they may get a discharge from their nose, fever, there may be infections, um, and, a, a, and as a result of a nasal drip, it may leave your son with a cough, a very annoying cough. And there, there are medications that, that are available over the counter for sinus issues, but, but obviously you don't want to be using, um, using them Daily, some of these over-the-counter drugs may be associated with side effects. It may be wise to chat first with your primary care doctor, and then um, if he or she thinks it's necessary, there's a, there, there are some drugs that can be used like antihistamines, they are nasal sprays. So the cornerstone is often a steroid spray um, in order to control symptoms and looking at precipitants, things that could be triggering um, these sinus attacks. So if he has a fever, if he has a foul smelling um, fluid or a discharge from his nose, if he has pain on the face, um, the doctor may actually think antibiotics might be warranted. Some sinus 